The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the first half of today's gospel, Jesus shares some insight on people and how fickle we are. First, he talks about how John the Baptist came and he wouldn't eat or drink, and the people said, well, he must have a demon because he doesn't eat or drink. But then Jesus comes and he does eat and drink. And so they say, well, he's a glutton and a drunkard. They were judged either way. Neither way was right. It's kind of a lose-lose. And I think that's actually completely in our nature sometimes as human beings. We would do that today, I think, because a lot of times what things that we don't understand go against our previous learned behaviors or experiences. And so we don't know what to do with that. Sometimes we refer to that as cognitive dissonance. When something is so different from our own beliefs or values or experiences, we question it and we judge it. Even when our deepest convictions are wrong, we have a hard time hearing what Jesus has to say. Just like a few weeks ago, we talked about how sometimes there are many possible choices to make in life, and sometimes it's hard to discern what the most loving, what the most serving of our neighbor is. We want to get it right, but we just can't seem to do it, even when we want to. So Martin Luther refers to this as simul justus et peccator, which is saint and sinner at the same time. And he reads this understanding of saint and sinner into his explanation of Romans 7, the passage that we just talked about. He pulls out 12 statements from this, uh, from this letter that are important to this reading and that kind of lead us to where we need to go. The first statement is, but I am carnal, or I am in the flesh, I am flesh. To note that we are all human beings, that we are all here in the flesh. And the second phrase, I do not understand my own actions. So sometimes, as humans, we just don't understand why we do the things that we do. We often ask, why did I do that? And then he pulls out the phrase, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. I don't think that he's referring to some of those big things that we know not to do, although sometimes we make pretty big mistakes too, but I think mostly what he's referring to is the things that those little voices talk about, that those little voices tempt us to say, oh, it's just this, or it's just that, but I know what to do, but it's okay, just give in this one time, and then we hate ourselves for making the wrong choice. So then, Paul goes on to say, I agree that the law is good. So even though we do these things that we hate, we know that the law is good, that the law has been made to 
to give us guidelines to help us love our neighbor and love God and love ourselves, and that is a good thing. So we know the law is good. So then Paul says, it is no longer I that do it, but sin which dwells in me. Back to in the flesh. Because we are human beings and we're tied to the beginning, to Adam and Eve, we have this sinfulness in ourselves. We are 100% sinner. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. And then he says, I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. Now that is the prompting of the Spirit. So we have this bodily human form, but then we also have this spirit, and that's where the Holy Spirit resides in us as well. And so the prompting of the spirit is that voice that knows what is right, that calls us to do that. But sometimes our sinful self overrides. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. So we're fully saint and we're fully sinner. We fully want to do the right thing, but that evil is right there alongside it. And it's that other voice talking to us. And we know that that spiritual side is here, for I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. That's that saint part of us, our inmost self. Paul goes on to say, I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind. Sugar and spice, or sometimes we see in the cartoons the little angel and the little devil on our shoulder, fighting back and forth those voices in our head. And it gets frustrating to go back and forth, trying to make the right decision, to be challenged by not knowing. Sometimes that causes fear, um, or we just don't act because we're afraid that we can't get it right. And so he says, Paul says, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? So we know we are sinner, we know we are saint, we know those voices collide. Who will save us from this? So then I of myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Paul has led us into thinking about why it is that we need Christ. Because we are saint in our baptism, but we are also sinner because we are human. So Martin Luther says then, sin boldly, but believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly. What does he mean by this? Does he mean go out and sin and do whatever you want, just like Paul wrote last week in the the letters, what then, shall I go on sinning? No, we shouldn't do that. It's not to just go out and sin as much as we want. But I think what, what Martin Luther's getting at is don't let fear and challenge and all these possibilities keep you from acting. Live. Make the choices. And when we get it wrong... The fact that we believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly is what saves us. Because it's Christ that saves us, ultimately, not our actions, good or bad. This brings us to the second half of today's gospel. As I think about how hard it is for us to know whether we're sinning or not sometimes, and how we try, but we don't know all the time what Jesus would do, This passage makes more sense in its timing. So we've gone from understanding how fickle we are as people, and then Jesus, and we're recognizing our human self, and then Jesus and Paul remind us of who has come to help save us from all of that. That there is also our spiritual self, reborn in the waters of baptism. The struggle between sinner and saint is real, but Jesus in this gospel reading, gives us a place to go, a thing to do. Jesus tells us, come to me, all you who are weary. Now, in the commandments, God says to take a day of Sabbath, to rest. But I think in this passage, come to me, all you who are weary, doesn't just refer to our physical need for rest And it's not just even our mental need for rest, but it's when we are spiritually weary, when we are tired and we don't know, 
which way to turn, and we don't know which, how to choose right from wrong. It's that kind of weary that Jesus reminds us, thanks be to God, that our own wisdom and intelligence isn't what saves us, nor is anything we do or don't do. It's what Christ has done for us. Jesus does not carry the, the yoke or the burden of sin that we do. Jesus' yoke is light. Jesus' burden is not heavy or weighed down by that sin. Therefore, as our spiritual self struggles with that sinner self, we can continually turn to Christ for rest from that struggle. So, as reminded by Luther, sin boldly, but believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly. So that we turn to Christ in our times of weariness, that we may lay down our burdens and rest in the hope and love and grace of God. Amen.